In this video you will learn how to make fluffy and realistic carpets using V-Ray. For this we will first create a basic hair and fur setup, then add various randomizations to make it look more interesting and finally build a realistic shader to render and finalize our result. So in this video we're going to be discussing of how to generate this kind of like nice fluffy carpets as you can see in here. And I tried several approaches in the end. I found for me the approach using fur works the best. So that's the approach we're gonna be discussing in this video in here. And as usual, you can find all of my scene files over on my Patreon if you wanna try that out by yourself together with a whole course on car rendering and other additional bonus content. So check out this if that's interesting for you. Other than that, let's just jump right into the tutorial and see how we can generate these kind of like nice fluffy carpets in here. So this one in here would be our starting point. As you can see, I built a simple studio lighting scene with this kind of like dark background so that we can focus more on the carpet here itself. And at the moment, we don't really have a carpet. We just have this like rough foundation here of a carpet. And as I said, I used several kind of approaches in order to generate different kind of carpets. There's for example, the approach to use displacement, use scattering, use even the new V-Ray N-Mesh modifier to always generate kind of similar looking effects. But in the end, I found the fur based approach to be working the best, at least for me. And that's the one that we're gonna be discussing in this tutorial in here. So let's first check out what we have in here. We just have this simple box here on the floor that resembles our carpet or it is the foundation for our carpet. You can see it's just an editable poly. I just applied some UV map and some Turbo Smooth on top of it. And what I did already was to split up different kind of IDs. So this one here, the top part would be my ID two, as you can see in here. And if I invert the selection, so that means all of the bottom here of the carpet, all of the parts where we don't need to have our fur, this one I set to ID one, so that in the end we can only generate the fur here on top of our carpet and we wouldn't waste any resources to have something on the bottom where we wouldn't really see any of our hairs anyway. So now since we have all of this prepared, let's select our carpet and then let's go to the create tab in here, go to the V-Ray category and add this V-Ray fur with the carpet foundation here selected. And once you do this, you can see you have some kind of like interesting looking result already. And there is now some kind of fur here generated on top of our base. So now if I would move the camera below our ground floor, you can see that there's also some hair here generated on the bottom, which of course is something that we don't really need or require in this case. So we can use this channel selection here. So the placement at the moment is set to the entire object. We can define to only set it to certain kind of IDs. So this one would be ID one, and we would only require to place the fur here on the ID two, so that at the bottom, there is no fur here generated anymore. So inside the fur object, you can define various kind of settings in here. Let's just dial in some basic settings because at the moment it clearly doesn't really look correct. Our fur is way too thick, way too long and so on. So let's just change that first. Let's use a different region so we can get a faster result for this part in here. And let's, for example, first start with this taper effect. So at the moment, our fur has the same thickness here, no matter if it's on the base or on the tip. And with the taper parameter, you can basically give the tip a more thinner value all the way to one. So that basically here, the width of our tip would be zero. We have this kind of like tapering effect here across the strand itself. Then we can use this band modifier here in order to define how this fur here is being bent. And with a value of zero, we just have it pretty straight. Let's use a value of 0.5 to get some kind of intermediate result or 0.75, for example, I think like this, it should look fine. And now we can also choose a different length because at the moment it would be way too long in here, 15 centimeters. Let's use a value of four centimeters, for example. It's now much shorter. Let's zoom back again and see how our overall result here looks like. And you can see we still have some minor issues in here. First of all, the amount of fur is just way too less. We can see our base of the carpet through it. 
and we can change that with the distribution settings in here and this per area settings basically define how thick the fur is so the higher you go the more fur will be generated so let's use for example a value of four and i think now our carpet looks a bit more believable because it's more thick we have these kind of individual strands in here and I think now we can't really see the base here for the most part and we can still increase these values here later on so probably later on i will go down with the radius in here make the individual hairs here thinner and then possibly compensate then by increasing the amount of fur in here but for now let's just leave it at those settings in here so a per area value of four and a radius here of 0.2 centimeters to just continue playing with our fur. So now I think we're clearly moving in the right direction. I think it looks already quite promising. The only issue apart from the color, of course, is that the carpet looks a bit too perfect. We don't really have this appearance like people possibly walked over it. All of the individual hair here, they have exactly the same length and that doesn't really look very natural. So what we're gonna do is to use maps here to change basically the individual hairs based on a texture. And always when we need textures, we need to make sure that here our base object has a UV map modifier applied to it. And that's basically where our fur object derives the UV information from. So once that is set up, we can easily change here, for example, the length of our individual hair. For this, I prepared this simple texture map. You can see this one is just a map that has some kind of like noisy appearance in here. We're gonna apply that now to the length map here of our fur object. And once we do this, you can see that now we have this appearance that some part here of the hair becomes much shorter, some remain long and so on. And I think like this, it kind of like breaks up the carpet here in a very nice way. I think now the effect is possibly a little bit too strong. So we can easily just add, for example, a color correction node in front of this and then just play with the gamma of our texture. For example, if we choose a gamma of three, then this appearance here is much more subtle. You can see we still have this kind of like natural breakups in here, but in order for this tutorial to make it a little bit more obvious, let's choose for example, a value of 1.5 so that we still can clearly see this individual length here of our fur. And I think like this, our carpet looks a lot more natural. It looks like some people possibly walked over it. They moved some furniture over it and so on. And this results in these kind of natural breakups here in the fur itself. So now let's build some kind of material here for our carpet. At the moment, it just uses the mesh color and that also tends to work for certain situations, but you normally would want to apply a shader. So you could use different kinds of materials like a V-Ray material, for instance. But in this case, we're gonna be using the V-Ray hair next material which is designed for these kind of situations. And it also can generate some kind of translucency effect. So let's use this here instead and then discover what kind of options this material here gives us. So by default, it applies this kind of brownish material here to our carpet. There's different kind of preset that you can choose for different kind of circumstances. Let's use, for example, a white fur preset in here. And you get something that resembles a white fur, for example, or we can choose dark brown, ginger red, or for example, some simple black material in here as a starting point. So now let's just use this white preset here, and then just explore what we can do with it. So this shader here works a little bit different than your usual shader. And to dial in the color values that you want or to dial in the look that you want, you have to use this kind of melanin and pheomelanin sliders. So this melanin is basically the pigmentation of the hair. So with a value of zero, your hair would completely appear white. With a value of one, the hair would get completely black. And anything in between is kind of like a brownish hair. And in order to make the hair appear more reddish, you can increase this pheomelanin slider in here all the way to one, for example. And like this, you have 
more like the appearance like this kind of ginger or red hair. So while this kind of approach here works very good for these kind of like natural fur or hair materials, which just come in this kind of color ranges, if you want to define your own specific color for your fur or for your carpet, you can also do that by using this dye color in here. So for this, you would normally go back to a completely white hair here by just zeroing out those two values. And then you can use a color in here. For example, I prepared this kind of greenish color in order to just get a completely green carpet or any other color that you require. So what is very nice about this hair material is that if you use it together in combination with the V-Ray fur, then you can get access to these randomization features in here where you can basically randomize the appearance of each of those little hair strands in here. And let's do that now. For example, let's use a random melanin value here of one. So that's the maximum amount. And you can see that some of our hair here will become more dark. We also will get some kind of brownish color tones mixed inside here. And it doesn't look anymore that each of our hair strands here has the exact same color value. You can also do that for the U, for example. So let's use a value of 0.25. So just like slightly make some U variations. You can see that some of our hair here has slightly different color values in here. And the same you can do for the saturation. So let's use, for example, saturation of 0.1. And then you can also use a random dye value, for example, at one. And now you can see that some of our hairs here are very green. Some of them are very dark and desaturated. You can get this kind of like very interesting looking carpets, which have these like kind of individual hair strands here sticking out. And you have a quite nice randomized effect in here. In our case, let's just use, for example, a value of 0.2 for all of them here. And let's not use a random melanin value in order to just get this kind of like base variation for our carpet. And now let's see what we can do if we want to use a texture map. So what we're gonna do now is to just use a simple bitmap here in order to just drive the color value. And for this, let's use, for example, this carpet bitmap in here so that we have these kind of individual patches here on our carpet. You can see they start to show up already, but they look rather pale, rather undefined. So for this, you can use a color correction node and just put this in front of the bitmap and then just increase the contrast here of our texture, for example, to a value of 0.6. And then those colors here, they become a little bit more strong, a little bit more vivid. And let's also go in and just decrease a little bit the randomization because I think at the moment those colors are too heavily changed. So let's use here a value of 0.05 for all of those different values in here. Like this, we get more of our original colors here showing through. So now overall, I feel that the carpet still looks a little bit rough. And that's mainly because we don't have enough of those hair strands. And also each of those individual hair strands is a little bit too big. So for this, I just kind of decrease the radius to, for example, 0.05. You can see now those individual hair strands are much thinner. The amount didn't change. So that's why we can now see through them at the base of the carpet. And this we want to prevent. We want to increase here the per area value to, for example, something like 16. And now we can see our pattern for the carpet here much better. And I still feel that you can see a little bit through those parts here and see the base. So for this, there's a simple trick. I could either just increase here the amount of hair, but at one point that doesn't really become very practical anymore. And the easier way is to just go in and pick the material here for the base of the carpet. And instead of using this kind of texture map in here, we're just gonna be using the same texture map as we used for our hair here. And then once you do this, you can see that now the base of the carpet also has the same kind of texture map or color values like our individual hairs. And like this way, it just blends much better. We don't really get this feeling anymore that there's this kind of brown slab under the hair. And like this, I think we get a quite nice and decent looking carpet. So now we have a very nice and fluffy carpet already. 
And there's one remaining issue, and that is if we just take some of these objects here, for example, like the speaker, and we have it interact with our carpet, so it's standing basically on the carpet itself, then you can see that there are some kind of issues here with the base of our speaker. It's kind of disappearing in the carpet itself and those hair strands are going through the base of the speaker. So this of course we try to prevent and for this luckily there's quite easy way to do that. And we can just use the density map in here and let's just add a V-Ray distance texture map. And then once we did this we can easily load this distance texture into an empty slot of our material editor and then we just need to pick our speaker and then once we did this you can see that now basically the density for everything that's extremely close to the speaker becomes completely black so that means there's no hair here below the speaker itself and this way they also cannot go through the base of our speaker anymore so now that's basically how you can easily like adjust your hair to not penetrate some kind of areas which you don't really want to go through and like this get basically the final result of this tutorial. So as usual you can find the scene files over on my Patreon together with all of my other scene files for all of my other tutorials together with a whole course on car rendering so you can check out this if that has any additional value for you. Otherwise see you in the next tutorial, take care and see you soon.